Welcome to Meet Your Nominees. I'm Mariah Goa from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm on the set of The Good Place with Ted Danson. Hi, Ted. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. End of a day. Uh, excited about going home. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, we'll make it quick and painless for and, you. No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm kind of mellow, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, um, uh, maybe this will excite you. Yes, it will. This is your 18th Emmy nomination. How do you feel about that? Uh, you know what? That's pretty cool. <laughs> and I've, I've won two, so that means, mm -hmm. what a loser. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I remember driving home, uh, you know, during the Cheers years, and uh, my kids who would stay up, but, you know, were like eight and ten or something, or younger. So, mm -hmm. did you win? Uh, no, no, but it's, it's okay. It was really fun. <laughs> and, you know, you have to be philosophical right. when you lose. You can be relaxed when you win. That's the only difference. Uh, you, I see. you have to work a little harder when you lose. And how has how has the Emmy ceremony changed since then? Since Don't know. Went? I haven't been for a while, so oh. I'll, I'll let you know. But I I do remember that you brought food. You filled your pockets with little <laughs> snacks. Yeah. Because uh, it's a long haul. It's like mm -hmm. a four and a half hour deal. Well, you're lucky yeah. in this category because you've already won in uh, for outstanding lead actor in a comedy series. Right. Um, so things are looking good for you. Nice. Good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. And uh, what what does Emmy night look for you look like for you? Are you going to be able to stay out late, dance at the after parties? Will you be wow, doing you never know. A little splash of CBD oil, and maybe I'll hit, <laughs> <laughs> hit the dance floor. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the Good Place. Okay. Because the Good Place is obviously a very unique television show. Um, but in your career, what makes it so special to you? Um, I love, here's what I love about it. Um, it's, a, it's about decency. It's about ethics. Um, it's about your actions have consequences. Everything you do, that action goes out into the universe and whatever amount of good or bad it creates, there are consequences. Somebody's, you know, paying attention. And I like that. I like that being put out in the world. Now that's kind of, uh, could be uh, preachy or something, you know, and it's not because it's wrapped in this kind of nine-year-old's fart sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. And it's sprinkled with visual magic because we're, we're in the afterlife, we're not on earth. Mm -hmm. um, except for those moments that we are. Mm -hmm. So it's this wonderful visual, there's so many things going on, and Mike Shure, our creator, has, uh, there's so many funny things, but they, he doesn't stop to go, here's a funny thing. Wasn't that funny? It's just, whew. So people watch it several times, the same episode. Uh, kids, 12 year olds come up, and I love that. And are glued to it and families watch it together and I just love that because mm -hmm. it's about something and that that's pretty neat yeah and the character of Michael um, what about him do you think resonated with the Emmy voters this year tell me a little bit about you know how he's written uh, well it's always fun to see somebody who you thought was one way uh, flip kind of in mm -hmm. front of your eyes and you go oh that kind of Willy Wonka nice guy act was an act and he's really a demon having the best time torturing people <laughs> but seeing this second season you saw behind the curtain mm -hmm. so that's always fun when you see you know somebody being so nice and actually you know just ripping the rug right out from under you so it, it was kind of that season for me where it was sky's the limit you know yes and at this at the end of the season you had to play bartender to Eleanor, and Michael Schur said he wanted to ask your permission to film that scene. What was that conversation like? It was that. Yeah. Do you mind? <laughs> no, I don't. Then I went, and I minded. <laughs> right. Because there's this bizarre, you know, I never went to bars. I had to go to bartending school to even understand all of this for cheers mm -hmm. and it took me like two years to get that kind of arrogant bartender you know man about town kind of thing um so going back to that 
just made me, I was sweating and I was nervous and I felt unsure of myself, which is basically how I feel in a bar anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, and season three, uh, you're filming it right now. Uh, what's it like? What's Michael's character like? Is Are you enjoying what he's doing? The new things he gets to do in oh, season Lord, three? Oh, Lord, yeah, very much so, very much so. Yeah. Um, I, I can't, I can't uh, give away stuff because it's just fun yeah. to discover it as you go. But it, it's about... Uh, we do become a family this year. Uh, you really tangibly see how much, you know, we love each other uh, mm -hmm. as characters, but also as, as actors. So it's, re it's really been a fun year. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and it's funny. This year <laughs> is really, really funny. And they do these outrageous turns and we're all over the place. I don't know. doubt that. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'll love it. My shirt will not disappoint you. <laughs> Um, in our roundtables last year, you said you never wanted your fame to exceed your ability to get work. Yeah. Did you have to make conscious choices to make sure that didn't happen? No, I mean, the, the, no. The choices that, that I learned to make as I went along was not to worry about um, having something created for you or how big was the part or that, you know, I learned finally kind of halfway through. Oh, well, I was very lucky. Lord, I had some of the best writers and best experiences. But at a certain point, I realized what I need to do is go be in the room with the most creative people, mm. ask them very nicely if I can be part of whatever it is they're doing, and don't worry about the size of the part, and just go be with creativity. So always, always looking for the creativity, you know, I think stands you in good stead. Mm. Now, Ted, I can't interview you without asking you about your amazing wife, Mary Steve. Oh, Virginia. yes, good. Now <laughs> this is going to pick up a little. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice she's given you career-wise? Oh, oops. Um, <laughs> wow. Sit up straight. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if she gives me, well, of course she gives me advice, but um, not really, you know? She's just incredibly, she lets you be. yeah, no, we're just both supportive of each other's. I, I fell in love with, partly with her creativity and who she was as an actor. I was totally, you know, starstruck even before I met her. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think of giving her advice, and I don't think, I don't think she does. She'll comment about my hair periodically. <laughs> and her go-to thing to get me to change something, she says, oh, it makes you look very old. And I go, huh, oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> girls. <laughs> they're, they're very good at winning arguments. <laughs> yeah, that choice made you look old. Oh, what? No. Um, now, you're passionate about ocean conservation. Uh, can you give us an ad advice on, you know, what's, what's one thing that we can do to help heal the ocean, everyday wow. people? All right, you know, know that your actions have consequences. Mm. So if you care about your health, uh, which you should, especially if you're a woman of childbearing years. Uh, years ago, during the Bush administration, and it's only gotten worse, uh, one out of six women had too much mercury in their system mm. to safely give birth to a child without the possibility of neurological damage. That gets your attention wow. as a consumer. So mm. learn what it is you're eating. Then you discover that the FBI in this country has said years ago, not long ago, that 60, 70 percent of what you're eating, depending on where you are, is not the fish that you thought it was when you're in the market. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of seafood fraud or restaurants, whether it's the boat that's lying or the restaurant or the, you know, so then you don't get to have a vote mm -hmm. on what you're eating for mm -hmm. your health point of view. All of these things are a way to get people's attention so that we can manage our oceans correctly. Because if mm -hmm. people are lying and cheating and overfishing areas and then just calling it something else, you can't manage your oceans correctly. And if you did, you could create a billion fish meals a day sustainably mm. forever. That's a big deal when you think about feeding yeah. the planet because you're not using any fresh water, you're not cutting down any rainforest. It's kind of like the perfect protein. So educate yourself as a consumer. Mm -hmm. Then give money. Find find an organization. Go online, and f start following them and learning about them. That's working internationally. And then, well, 
go check out Oceana.org, which is I'm on the advisory board of. Mm -hmm. If that rings a bell to you, then support it, mm -hmm. because the work has to be done on an international level. Yeah. And right now, vote. Yes. You know, because this particular administration wants to open up the entire coastline of the United States to offshore oil drilling. Mm -hmm unless it's a state that he likes better than other states, <laughs> you know, but so vote. Yeah. Make sure that you, you know, you know that that could be harmful to your coastal cities and economy and, you know, tourism and hotels and all of that. So educate yourself. That's well, my advice. And one way to do that is to go to Oceana.org. That's great advice. Thank yeah. you so much, yeah, Ted. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah. That. We'll see you on Emmy night. Yes, you will.